hot and warm weather. Ah, uh, in my city it is hot, very hot. How hot is it in Ho Chi Minh City, Bon? Uh, sometimes it is thirty-eight degrees. Wow, in April it's thirty-eight. Yeah, sometimes. Wow, in uh, Taipei last year it was thirty-two degrees, because my wow. birthday party was on April twenty-six, and that one uh, of the guard men took me to a all-you-can-eat Chinese food with boiling seafood and steak and then outside i couldn't believe how hot it was but when it was like 34 degrees uh, that's too hot for me you know because i live in yeah. japan it's not hot like that here until july yeah. so i'm a lucky guy I think, yeah i think uh, i think if you live in ho chi minh city you cannot yeah. believe yeah i i don't know i might visit you guys in june i might come to ho chi minh city so uh yeah. <laughs> we'll see bone all right, yeah. let's see, we have uh, Mr. John Eleven. Are you okay? I'm fine, thank you. Are you there, John? Hey, John, you're in the shadows. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> uh, you what? Call, like, you're the shadow man. Hey, great haircut, John. You got a short haircut for summer? Yeah, my dad just uh, cut for me yesterday. Wow, okay, looks good. Your dad cuts good hair. <laughs> Bone said it was 38 degrees in Ho Chi Minh City. What's the weather in Hanoi? Uh, let me see. So like it's about 28 Hanoi, degrees Celsius right now. Yeah. 28? Okay, that's about not bad. bad. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Do you know, when I was in Taipei, Taiwan, my air conditioning made this noise all night long. And it was so noisy, but I had to use it. So it kept me awake all the time. I never got a good night's sleep. Hey, who has the A3, Mr. Doong? How do you say your name, Doong? Doong, are you there? Uh, I'm Doong. Yeah. Hey, Doong, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Hey, Doong, what's this A3 thing? What does that mean? What's the special meaning of A3? No, my name was just uh, my class and my name. I use it all the time. Oh, okay. During COVID, so... Oh, okay. during COVID. Uh -huh. Hey, Doon, can you read your work tonight? I have your essay. It's nicely written. Some of you are the new students who have a nice writing style. So can you read yours tonight? Uh, is it Brendan? Yes. Who is it? Um, have you checked my homework yet? I did, John. It's good homework. I, I gave you a nice compliment. Did you see? I said you're a stylish I, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't think I saw it. Oh, you better check it. It's in yellow. I said, John, you have a nice writer's style. It's really cool. It's smooth. It's confident. I noticed that in Doong's work. Uh, I noticed that in John 12's work. You guys are becoming really good writers. You have unique styles of expression, and that's what's important in writing. It's when you can almost hear the person's voice, John. It's really good. And uh, Havy, nice writing also. How are you today, Ms. Havy? Um, I am fine. I'm kind of happy. And my yeah. name is Havy, and it is the, the long E, not the show is your right. <laughs> so it's Havy. Havy. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice name, Havy. Havy, what, how do you say in your screensaver behind you? Aurora. Uh -huh. Here's in meetings. Um, right. you're, what was that? There's that was the motion light. Oh, okay. Hey, Havy, look in the chats. I wrote Aurora Borealis. Those are the green northern lights behind you, which is kind of cool. Oh, look at cute Daisy. Can we say hello to Daisy? Hello, Daisy. You're bouncing all over the place. Daisy, are you on an iPad or an iPhone? <laughs> Miss Daisy. No, I'm on computer. Really? Okay. So you're uh, maybe the Wi-Fi connection. It was, you look like you were in space, Daisy, moving all around. <laughs> it was kind of funny. How are you, Daisy? I'm great. Good. It's good to see you. Nice of you to come. How is Ms. Ariel? Hey, Ariel, nice writing today. I enjoyed your writing. So I'm going to read three writing things and I'll try to see um, whose I have today. So Ariel, how are you today? Good. I always say the same things, Ariel, but I love this wallpaper behind you. It looks so cool. It reminds me of a Swedish restaurant in Chicago that has good hotcakes and stuff. Hey, Alice. 
Oh, hey, Bone, you have a question? <laughs> Bone, maybe I'll show you that name of that famous restaurant when we're in class. Uh, I have to remember, tell teacher, say, hey, teacher, show that famous restaurant. I'll show it to you. It's called Ann Sather's, and they have the best pancakes. There are people from Sweden who came to Chicago 120 years ago. Ellis, how are you? Ah, uh, I surprised him. Good teacher. Yeah, and you're in Ho Chi Minh City. Is this true what Bone said? It's 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Let me yeah. see. <laughs> oh my god. I can't remember where to see it, but yeah. It's really hot here. So Alice, what do you do when it's really hot? Do you stay inside? Do you go to the supermarket? What do you do? Actually, I'm I'm always staying inside. Yeah. So you keep the air conditioning on? No, my house doesn't have any air AC. Oh, what do you use? Electric fan? Um. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Ellis, do you know how to say electric fan in Japanese? I don't know. Sanpuki. <laughs> it's such a crazy sounding word. Sanpuki. Sanpuki. And the key means energy. Sanpuki. And in Korean, it's sambugi. They have almost the same name. Sambugi and sanpuki. But that's crazy. It sounds like a hamburger or something. Hey, would you like some more sanbugi? Hey, John 12 is smiling. He likes my joke. John 12, how are you from Dong Nai? Yes, it's good. It's good. It's good. Hey, Don, um, John, what city is that behind you? And I think it is New York or something. Yeah, that's that famous Chrysler building right over your head, the Chrysler building. Do you know the Empire State and Chrysler? They were in 1933, 1934. They had a contest to see who could build the bigger tower. And Empire State won. Do you know why Empire State won? I don't know, but I thought that was great because the contest about who's the, the higher. But um, the contest was higher. higher. Good. But how did they do that? Do you know how they did that? I think they just built and built it higher. Well, they already had all the engineering and they couldn't go any more higher. So they built a taller antenna. That's all they did was build a higher antenna on top of the building. So you can see the Chrysler antenna behind you. And Empire State said, oh, well, we're taller because our antenna is 10 feet taller. <laughs> so it's crazy. All right. Tina, are you there with the pretty purple and yellow and pink? How are you, Tina? Uh, I'm good. Tina, I worked with a Tina in Taipei last year, and I called her Tina Tina. It was her nickname. <laughs> So I promise I, if I call you Tina, Tina, it's just because I'm thinking of pretty Tina in Taipei who worked next to the principal's office. But we had a nice principal. He wasn't scary. Lewis, how are you? I'm fine. Lewis, thank you for your writing today. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was, yeah. was kind of cool. You, I wrote in the comments that it reminds me of one of my days where you just stay busy all day, but you feel good. <laughs> It's pretty cool, Lewis, yeah. actually. I'm glad you feel that way at 14 years old. I hope you can continue to feel that way all the way to your working days, too, where you stay happy, but you stay busy. It's kind of interesting. Mr. Red Army, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. How are, how are you doing? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm Ellis eating made a Hitler. Ellis, who, why Hitler? Why Hitler, Ellis? It's scary. Uh. <laughs> Impossible homework is students fear. That's interesting, Jimmy. Um, Red Army, how do you feel about homework? Homework, uh, yeah. yeah, like the things we need to do. You just do it. Is it does it is it exciting? Is it interesting? If it's science homework or math? Um, I don't know because I'm lazy. Okay. How long do you take? One or two hours each week to do homework? I mean, each night. Sorry. Uh, I think one hour. One hour is good. It's That's enough. Good. It is enough. <laughs> Very good, Red Army. Let's check with our new student, Mr. Liam. Liam, how are you? Hi, thank you. Liam, can you read your writing tonight? I picked you and I picked Mr. Um, 
I picked, let's see, Dung I picked, and I picked Liam and one more person to read their writing. So you guys, let's try. Well, um, we did the events in the day and I lined these up here. So first let's go to Liam. And then Liam, if you can read this for the class, I'll put this here. And uh, Mr. Liam, now don't be embarrassed Liam because this will be the first time you read for the students, but it's okay. It's good writing. And can you see it? Oh, it didn't, did it share okay, Liam? Let me try again. Sometimes the sharing is weird on Zoom. Okay, let's try again. Can you see that, Liam? Yes. Okay, go ahead, read for us. Uh, last Sunday, I woke up and studied 12 life skills outside. Next, I had lunch with my grandparents. After that, I did my homework that my teacher gave Button. me. Then I went to the beach with my friend and mom. We had a great time together. Finally, I learned writing with Mr. Burden McDonald. Last Monday was really fun. First, I woke up and did my daily routine. I had cereal for breakfast. Next, I went to school to study. I went home and enjoyed lunch. Rice and chicken was the best choice in my menu. Then I took a nap and I took a nap and went back to school in the afternoon. When I finished, I had a haircut and I had dinner, which was mashed potatoes and beef steak. Finally, I had a shower, wrote, my, wrote in my diary and sleep. Z, Z, Z. <laughs> Very good, Liam. I like it. Uh, enjoyable. I wrote to you. It sounds like an adult's day. Hey, Liam, what are the 12 life skills? Do you learn that in school or a different program? A different program. Yeah, it's kind of cool, the 12 life skills. Nice problem solving skills for life, right? Yeah. Nice. I'm happy you're taking a course like that. All right. Thanks, Liam. Mr. Dung, I need your help. Dung, 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 dung. Are you ready, Dung? Here's your chance. You said, I want to join the class more teacher. Why don't you call on me? Doong, here's your chance. Here's your big chance to be famous. Are you ready to be famous, Doong? Yeah. All right, here you go. I like this one too. All right, here we go. Uh, a special day. Like every other day, I get up at 6 a.m. to get ready for school. I had a fun day at school, but when my mom came to take me home, she said, she said that my shoes were kind of whipped in place so I should buy a new pair. I was delighted. And we went to a mall and I bought a beautiful pair of shoes. It was Friday too, so I didn't have to study that evening. And I watched some movie and chat with my friends. I went to sleep quite late because the movie was really long. Very good, Doong. Hey, Doong, um, what kind of shoes did you have they got ripped? Were they sneakers? Uh, Sports shoes? No, they were just like... Um, uh, Let me see. Leather. I, uh, back then I used to wear uh, the soccer shoes to school. Oh, soccer and, shoes, yeah. And my mom said that it wasn't okay, so we just bought a pair of shoes okay. uh, at the market and uh -huh. it ripped off like okay. after a few months. Yeah. Because it was quite low quality. Uh -huh. And so that's uh -huh. why my mom took me to get some new shoes. Hey, Dung, I put this in capital letters. For everybody, if you can see this, you should put the um, title of your story in capital letters. That's the best thing to do. It's really good. Sounds like a nice, relaxing day, Dung. I like it. <laughs> You're all wild, said Tina. Yes, we have this crazy Hitler thing going on, Alice. I'm still scared about that because I was reading about Hitler the other day, and it was just so scary. That guy was scary. All right, let's see, who did this one? My special day, this is quite short, but it's very nice. Um, it's Jia Hung. Hey, Jia Hung, are you here today? I hope you're in today's class, Jia Hung. Or is Jia Hung last night? I have two classes, so I was thinking maybe it's Jia. No, it's, uh, I don't know whose this is, you guys. Well, uh, I think maybe Jia Hung is um, last night. This one's kind of cool. I like this one. Hey, Bone, can you read this student? Um, Jia Hung wrote this last night, but I just thought he or she was in 
I think it's, is Gia Hung a girl's name or a boy's name, uh, Bone? I don't know. All <laughs> right. Would you like to read it? But can you call another because like advice it's not very good right now. Oh, okay. Call on someone else. Jennifer, are you there? Hello, Jennifer. Jennifer, who's 10 years old and can read well, I remember from last week. Jennifer, are you there in Ho Chi Minh City? Jennifer! Ha, 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 ha. No. Um, Tony. Tony, how are you? I'm fine. Tony, can you read this from Jia Han? Yes. Jia Hun. Okay. Jia Hun is me. Oh, it is you. <laughs> so Jia Hun, that's Tony. Okay, Tony. Tony, put your name on it so I know who it is, okay? Let me do this, Tony. Are you ready? Yes. Tony. All right, great. Here we go, Tony. Last Friday was a fantastic day for me. First, I woke up at 6 a.m. and got dressed. I didn't have to go to school that day. Next, I did an online math competition at home, but it was too hot. And until now, I'm still waiting for the result. Then I had lunch. At a big restaurant, it was very good. After that, I went swimming at the beach at four o'clock in the evening. Finally, I had dinner at home and then I went to bed. I think that night I slept very well. Nice, Tony. I really like it. I told you it's like the Nobel Prize winner Ernest Hemingway would write a few books like that. And the books tell the events, but then he starts putting in these details that make it more complicated but the sentences stay simple it's kind of a cool writing style it was called a experimental writing style in the 1920s 30s and 40s some people didn't like it but i think it's really cool thanks tony hey john you raised your hand what would you like to say mr john i would like to have um what should i say how do you say? Thanks for Tony's paragraph because online he missed an N. Ah, you saw it? I didn't see that. He missed an N. Where? Online. Oh, online. Let me see. Tony wrote. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? John, I'm going to tell you a crazy story. Oh, John, didn't you know when he says... O-line, he doesn't mean online. He has a secret internet called O-line or o -line, right? <laughs> it's a joke, John. So we're going to put the N in there for him. Thank you, John. I didn't catch it. <laughs> okay. I put the thank you. Hey, John, can you help me? I want to start today's main lesson, okay? So let me uh, save this okay. one for Mr. Mr. Tony. Thank you. And we'll do more of that. And then we have the directions. Okay. Now. I did this lesson last night and I said, of course, this is easy, everybody, because you guys have excellent English and maybe you learned this in your um, elementary school one or two years ago. So you're going to say, teacher, this is so easy, but I promise we'll make it a little more difficult for you young writers. OK, John, would you like to read it? And you can read all of this, please. Is Mr. John there? Oh no, John, what happened? Oh, I forgot to turn my microphone on. <laughs> All right, here's John. Hello, everyone. Tonight we will practice giving direction using direction word in your writing to tell someone how to get somewhere. There are two parts to this lesson. First is the warming up using direction, which many of you from your know from your primary school English lessons. Let's review them. Direction words. Left, right, up, down, north, south, <laughs> east, and west. Mm. Position word. Over, oh. under, past, beyond, before, above, beside. Mm. Time order word. First, second, then, next, after that, finally. Mm. We'll start with a simple exercise. How do you get from your classroom at school to the school cafeteria or lunchroom. If your school doesn't have a lunchroom, how about the nurse office? Oh, very easy. 
The lunch <laughs> room is right next to my classroom. Okay, so you go out of your classroom. Do you turn right or left, Mr. John? I turn left. I go straight to the door. I turn right. I go in. Easy. Okay. So, John, I call this kid Henry. He's a cute American kid. And uh, let's see, who can we call on? I want to call on someone we haven't. Ariel, are you there? Yes. Ariel, can you read this part here, please? At Henry's school, this is how to get from the lunchroom to the nurse office. Henry uses some of the words you see up above. Henry, first, go down the hallway. When you get to the end, turn left. Walk past the main office. Then the nurse office is the second door on the right. Nice. Nice reading there, Ariel. Okay, now I found this map and it's from an old school. This school is from Battle Creek, Michigan. That's where Kellogg's breakfast cereal was started. You guys, maybe you eat cornflakes for breakfast. That's where it started. Um, it's kind of old, you know, I looked. Auditorium is where you listen to music or watch people on the stage. Biological laboratory, you can say laboratory or laboratory. It's where you do your science experiments. Classroom, 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 classroom. Now, this is what's interesting. Hey, John 12 from Dong. Now, what do you think of this? Oh, my gosh. There it is. What do you see here, John? I say I see it's a museum. Yeah, don't you think that's crazy? A museum in a, in a primary school? Yes, I thought the children, the naughty children, will come and destroy all of them. I know. They're like dinosaurs, and they're, they're going to, like, awake at night like Jurassic <laughs> Park. All right. Havy, are you there? Havy, look here. Yeah. I use in um when Ariel read this, I used the word hallway here, the hallway. But this map is so old. Oh, they call it corridor. That's the old name for hallway, you guys. Corridor. Yeah. So at the end of the corridor, if you go through these doors, what do you see here, Havy? Oh, I will see the music and drawing room. Yeah. Do you like that place? The arts room? Yeah. The art room, I feel fine with it, but uh, the, yeah. um, I just... Yeah. Uh, hey, do you think that they divide this room into two places? There's painting here and the music here, because painting... I think the painting came, like, there will be some color and crafting, so there will be a lot of, like, craft, and if it go to the... I know. Maybe hey, like you have some kid with an expensive violin that costs like five thousand dollars, and some kid spills glue or paint in the art room. Isn't that crazy? So yeah. how could they put the music and drawing room in one place? I mean, that just makes me think that must be crazy. All right, let me ask Daisy. Hey, Daisy, are you there? Hello, Daisy. Yes. Daisy, if I leave the classroom and I go left down the hallway and then I get to the principal's office, I have to go talk to the principal. Daisy, do you think the principal's office is scary? Uh, yeah. Okay. This cute girl last night said, I never make problems, so this principal is always friendly to me. And Daisy, I laughed and I laughed and I laughed because I thought that was really funny. All right. Hey, Lewis, are you afraid of the principal's office? Um, I don't know. You but never had a problem I, I, with the principal? A, li a little bit. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. All right. Just, just okay. a little bit. Does it make you nervous, this place? No, I don't nervous about anything. Yeah. We had a nice principal. I wasn't too nervous in, in primary school. Hey, um, Louis, do you see here we have wardrobe here and wardrobe here? Again, this is an old-fashioned... Um, school from maybe about 80 years ago or even 100 years ago. Um, and so do you know what the wardrobe is? The um, wardrobe? I don't know. Well, Battle Creek, Michigan, where the home of Kellogg's breakfast cereal is, it's really cold in winter. So the kids can put their winter boots, their hats, their mittens, and their coats in the wardrobe because it takes up too much space 
or there's snow and water dripping off of the boots and the hats and the uh, gloves. So they tell them to put it in the wardrobe. And then in the wardrobe, it's really hot in there. So it's dry air and it makes your coat really dry. So when you leave at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I thought this was kind of cool. They have a wardrobe. Now um, kids put their uh, coats outside their hallway. But a lot of stuff has changed. Um, let me ask Kitty. Hey, hello, Kitty. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Thank good. you. Let me think. Kitty, um, if I start in one of these classrooms here and I say, Kitty, how do I get to the principal's office if I'm in this big classroom? What should I do? Can you tell me in English? Uh, first, you go to the end of the hallway and you turn, turn left. Yes, uh, left. And you go straight. Yeah. You will see the principal office uh, on the right. Yeah, because there are all these nervous kids waiting outside, Kitty. <laughs> Very good, Kitty. Let's go to Tina. Hey, Tina. Tina, if I'm in this classroom here, how do I get to the museum? The museum? Uh, I would just walk straight out and turn to... Wait. Turn right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and then just walk, just walk straight into the museum. Yeah, it's a big place. Hey, Tina, what do you think about a museum in a primary school? That's, I've never even been into a museum before. Oh, really? It's just so strange, a museum in a in a primary school. Hey, John, what do you want to say about that? You have something to say about this museum thing. Um, I think um, I agree with Jimmy because we've mm -hmm. never even seen a museum before. And uh -huh. if this course is completely crazy, <laughs> it's not crazy, they should put a library in. A library, that's a good idea, John. They should put a library here. By the way, do you see a library in this school? Mm, nope. No. Now, this could be just the first floor, so maybe they're missing a floor. All right. Yeah, and where's, where's the gym? Uh, oh, the gym. Yeah, so I think this is just the first floor. So I think they're missing the second floor. Do you want to see if we can find a second floor? Okay, I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to find the second floor because I think that's better for you guys to find a second floor. Okay, so I go Yahoo Maps and I go second floor of a elementary school, you guys. But usually in elementary schools, they don't have those. So we're going to go second floor map. We have uh, five floors. Who, you do? That's That's really high. Who is that? Who said that? Was that Jimmy? Jimmy? Hey, Jimmy, do you think that's safe to have five uh, floors? They have uh, one tower that have uh, two floors and the other have three. See, they stopped doing that in America because in my hometown, Chicago, there was a terrible fire at a primary school. And it was just, they said, it's too dangerous. In that fire, 98 students died, Jimmy, so... Um, they, I know it's crazy, but they said no more, no more uh, tall schools in America. So there are only two stories now. That's the highest you can build for a school, right? All right, you guys, I found it. Uh, let's see who's here. I want to call on somebody who didn't get a chance. And we have Timmy. Are you there? Timmy or Timmy? Yes, mister. And oh. I don't think the second floor matches the first floor. I know because, you know, the first floor was about a map from about 80 years ago or 90 years ago. This is a new modern school that I chose, right? Okay, now, what do you think is the most interesting one yeah. here to me in this map, on the second floor map? Um, for me, the strange thing over here is that there are study curls and some second floor tables, but I don't really think that these tables uh, bring some purpose because if we keep the tables here, what are they used for? I think they could be like a second hand or something. Look at this, my studio booth, video viewing. Does this sound like one of those um, high tech 
uh, high schools for a junior high school? I mean, you have a video uh, viewing. Like that, that sounds like a student made a studio or something. Because yeah, I mean, look at this. It's I'm commonly on based on one's property, not a school. Mister. Yeah, I just found this because I needed a second floor, but I didn't see that this is actually like a high tech school where you have, this is an old fashioned library where they say circulating books, but studio, I mean, come on, is that recording or video studio? Um, I'm not really sure, but wait, mister? Yeah. Like what happened in the six Chicago incident that caused uh, fire? Like it burned the school? It's, this is really crazy. My mother used to say some bad boy was smoking cigarettes and he shouldn't be, and he dropped the cigarette in an old wooden stairwell, like here are the stairs, they were made of wood, and it caused a fire. Um, what was really terrible is that this, the school was three stories tall, so on the third story, most of the kids were trapped and they couldn't get out, so they uh, were breathing smoke air with no oxygen, so the fire department just found full classrooms full of kids. It was called the Queen of Angels Fires. Um, my uh, sister's husband's young, older sister went there and she survived it, but she was very badly burned um, and it caused health problems all her life. She died when she was only 28 of blood cancer. It was probably from the fire. So everyone in Chicago who's maybe 40 years old and up remembers Queen of Angels Fire. Pretty terrible. You can check it on Wikipedia if you want, uh, Timmy. Um, queen and then of angels because it was a Catholic school. Oh, yeah, like sorry the, to tell you that, but it's part of our education. We have to discuss those things, you guys. Yeah. Okay. So that school only had like two floors, Mister. Actually, it had. I think it had three three stories of a really old style school. Um, and so it was just dangerous. You know, they didn't design schools well in those days. Um, now they have lots of emergency places. But to me, the new thing that's dangerous in American schools, like if in a high school, if some kid goes crazy and brings a gun to school and starts shooting people, um, now they have to have security. They design schools with lockdown security, right? So this is like serious stuff. Mm. All right. Yeah, you always ask the great questions, Timia. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, what we got, you guys, I need to go back to the directions because um, I want to start part two. Our teacher helper isn't here today, so I couldn't do breakout rooms. I wanted you guys to try that. So let's see. Um, Ellis, how are you doing tonight? Would you like to read this part here? Me? Okay. Yeah. Now, can you work with your classmates to tell them yeah. how to go to your classroom to places like the gymnasium, the gymnasium, the yeah. lunch room, the library, the computer room, or the nurse office? Mm. Try to use first go left right when you leave the classroom and then go. <laughs> okay. We already kind of did that together, but we didn't get a chance to do it in the chat room. Alice, would you like to read this part here? This is much more interesting for tonight. Now, let's take the direction words, position words, and then type other words. And use our imaginations to tell where something is one or two paragraphs of a fantasy story. You can choose a castle, a fortress, an alien landing zone or some other futuristic, totally cool place. But you must describe where is it located so you can tell a friend how to get somewhere. It seems cool. Yeah, um, Alice, were you in the uh, imaginative story class with, uh, um, in wintertime in January with teacher Michael? Oh, we had a bit of a problem there. All right. Hey, Gia Khan, are you there? Tony, Mr. Gia Khan. Hey, Tony, are you yes. there? Tony, would you like to read this fantasy story? It starts here and it goes to here. Would you like to read for us? It's the brown writing. Are you there, Tony? Tony, you're having some microphone problem or something. Uh, Dung, are you there? Yes, Hello, Doong. Tony, Doong, are you guys there? Doong, are you there? Oh, yes, 
Doong, can yes. you read the brown part here? And then Tony, you can read part two. Um, Doong, read this part here, okay? Okay. One day, your friend from another city visits you at school, and he tells you, I'm trying to get to the castle academy from your school. There are Harry Potter casting spells, spell lessons there this afternoon, and I can't be late. Do you answer? Sure, I can help you. The castle is on a hill. You can't miss it because it is huge. You have to walk past the hill to the closest. Uh, you have to walk past the hill closest to our school. Then go through a forest. After the forest, there's a small town. Go to the town quickly. There are some weird people living there. And they might ask you a question to make you late for the casting spell lessons. They like to do that to kids because they are not very nice people. Very good. Thanks, Dung. Hey, Kitty, would you like to read this part here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you would. You, you will come to a road after the town. It's called Dragon Way Road. Walk up to the walk up the road a little bit, but you will soon come to a fork in the road. Make sure you go left. If you go right, there's there's a dragon hiding in a cave, and he lied to eat. And he like to eat kid for <laughs> lunch. Uh, you definitely do not want to go right once you are on the right path and walking. You will see the the enormous castle up here, up ahead. Walk mm -hmm. fast, and someone at the gate will let you in if you show them your head, your what, your one, and your hidden name tag. Yeah, because it's Harry Potter stuff, so it's a hidden name tag, magic name tag, and a wand, you know, that Harry Potter used. Thanks, Kitty. Hey, John 12, you have a question, Mr. John 12 from Dong Nai. Sorry, you've been asking a long time. I think what if the dragon will be caught by the police also? <laughs> okay, what are you adding to this story, John, one more time? And what if the dragon be caught by the police or the wizard? I think wizards have a better chance of catching this dragon. Do you, I think this dragon would destroy the police, John. <laughs> All right. By the way, do you guys see this is called a fork in the road? If you go right, it's the dragon. You want to go this way. So that's what's called a fork, like an eating fork. They call it a fork in the road. Okay. Hey, Jimmy, are you there? Yes. Jimmy, do you think this poor kid has a chance of walking to the Harry Potter class? No. <laughs> do you think he's going to make a mistake and get eaten by the dragon? Mm, yes. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> poor kid. He looks so cute. All right. Hey, V, did you catch the part where the little boy has to walk through this village? Should he stop or yes. should he keep walking? I think... He uh, will keep walking, and I think he will need a bike because he can ride very, very fast to the uh, town so no one can uh, question him. Yeah, because they're like weird people in that town, and they don't want him to go to the magic lesson. I think they work for somebody else. All right. Hey, Daisy, are you there? Ms. Daisy. Daisy? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Daisy, what do you think of this castle? Is this like Disney or is it like Harry Potter? It's like anything. <laughs> it looks there, right? Okay, so are you guys ready? This is going to be the homework. And uh, let me get somebody who didn't get a chance to read. Uh, we have uh, Jennifer, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Jennifer, can you read the homework for this week? Uh, Homer, can you write one, two, or three paragraphs using this idea of magical place to get to? For new students, try one paragraph. For students who really want to challenge, then two or three paragraphs will be just right for your level. Good luck. I look 
for your tutoring your homework. Yeah, so I know Ellis, you can write a full page. Um, let's see who else can write it if you want. You know, if you're busy, <laughs> Ellis, are you busy? John, you can write. Lewis, you can always write a full page. I think Bone wrote a full page. See if you can do two paragraphs or three paragraphs because you guys seem to like writing. And this is um, for our directions class, but I wanted to make this fun for you. So it's like the imaginative writing class that we took in January, teacher Michael and I were both teaching it. So I wanna give you some ideas. And uh, John, are you there? John 11, are you still there? Uh, yes. Hey John, I wanted little Timmy to be here tonight. So I chose all these crazy pictures. But he's not here tonight. It was his birthday. Maybe he's getting a birthday dinner. So, John, can you describe any picture you like? I, I'll put three here so far. On um, this one's oh hard. Oh my to god! See. So, which do you think is most interesting? I think it's the uh, picture who, which is um, under the picture who has those giant bubbles. Yeah. What do you think about these giant bubbles? Uh, it's right. Um, under the picture of the giant bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> the giant bubble. Those are really strange. Do you think like if you went in the bubble, you would be in a different world? I don't know. But anyway, I'll just, just uh, describe the picture. Okay, which one do you want to describe? The one who, which is right under the picture who has giant bubbles. This one here. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about this because a student last night gave me some ideas, but I'm going to keep them secret. What do you think about this place? It looks exactly like Hogwarts. Oh, it is? Do you think that's a copy of Hogwarts? Not exactly, but it do look like it. Only okay, so one thing that is missing, that yeah. is the lake. Yeah, the lake. What do you think about these trees and this? It has snow, so what season is it? Uh, the castle looks exactly like Hogwarts because mm. I think um, it is exactly like the Astronomy Tower, Gryffindor Tower, and Hufflepuff Tower. Yeah, and it's winter time. Did you notice that, John? So here are some trees with yeah. snow. So uh, the students last night called yeah. it the Winter Castle, which I thought was pretty cool. Winter Castle. Yeah. Okay. And if if you are a muggle like we are, you can't you can't see the castle. Uh, okay. Some of you who may have read Hogwarts a history said that it just looked like a battled old building who have a sign that said "Do not enter." Dangerous. Yes. All right. Let me go to Liam. He has his hand up. Liam. What do you think? What picture are you interested in? Liam, I'm going to add some new pictures here. Liam Vung Tao. Um, I added, this one's really cool. It's an ancient city. Someone said it looks like it's in Mongolia or Tibet. I thought that was really cool. And then for the younger students, maybe you want a candy house, how to get to the magic candy house. But you have to be careful with magic candy houses. There are always witches in those houses. <laughs> so Liam, what's interesting to you amongst these pictures? Oh, I can, I interesting here. The I uh, interesting the underwater. Yeah, the underwater. students like this one too. What do you see in here, Liam? Uh, I see uh, though. Uh, do you see those peoples around here? Yeah. And I think they are using. You are using laser guns. Oh, hey, lasers! <laughs> We're laughing because laser our our friend Timmy loves laser cars and things. Um, Liam, do you think the sea creatures in this picture are peaceful or dangerous? I think they will attack people and they will chew us like chewing gum. <laughs> They'll eat us like chewing gum. Last night I said, if you were staying in one of these underwater hotels with your school classmates, what if you woke up at night and then you look out your window and you see this just giant nasty shark? Wouldn't that just, you wouldn't be able to sleep because the shark would be watching you. All right, um, let me go to Havy. Havy, what do you think? What do you like best? I like the ancient city. Oh, you do like that ancient city. Why do you like it, Heavy? Because it is beautiful. I it looks like in one kind of pretty of the uh, in uh, the Asia in the Himalaya. Uh, yeah. 
and it's yeah. very beautiful. Very and nice. I think there will be a road that will go into the castle and the, the castle will have many people and we cannot know what the people are doing with us. They can help us, they can kill us. Amy, yeah. would you like to put that all in a story? Could you do that in yeah. one paragraph or two paragraphs? Okay. You can write anything you want. Just remember, you guys, try to put some directions how to get to this place. So for the ancient city, Havy, you would say, first you have to climb the mountain, then you have to go down the snow field, then you have to go to the gate, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you have to say how to get there, okay? So that's the assignment. Let's go to John 12, and then we'll go to Lewis, because you guys have many ideas. John 12, what do you think? What's your impression? I think I will choose the picture with the tower on the in the sky. Okay, and is it this one? Yes. Okay, tell me what your idea is about that. I think it is imagining the tower in the future, and I think it use the solar energy to run on, and I think at that time the technology is growing that they can even live up in the sky, and there will be no places, no cars on the road, and yeah. I think the future that will be good, and even for the environment and the nature, and the people maybe can they will used to be in the in the future. I think they will live in their spaces. Hey John, do you think that this city in the clouds in the sky uses anti gravity technology? I think if they use it, they will fly out in the space. Yeah. Oh, it would just keep going and go into space. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. Hey, Lewis, what do you think? What's your idea here? What do you uh, like best? I thought that underwater city and ancient city is very impressive. Mm. Yeah. These artists um, put their work on uh, Yahoo images. Yahoo's really mm. good. I really like this one, too. I would like to go there for 10 weeks and just relax. And if they have yeah. hot baths inside... That would yeah, be I like to uh, explore something that is incense. Yeah, definitely. And that's why Havi said it looks like Himalayas. So maybe there are like Buddhist people and they have old magic manuscripts and you read them and you feel happy about life or something, right? That would be cool. Let me uh, go to Ariel. Hey, Ariel, of these pictures, remember we had Candy House. We had the ancient city. We had the undersea place. We have the Harry Potter's kind of thing, um, the strange balls, and then the city in the clouds. What's interesting to you, Ariel? Mm, I think Harry Potter. Which one is it? Harry Potter. Oh, I, the Harry Potter one. Yeah. I watch this because I was scared of it. Even my sister. <laughs> She's that uh, she not scared anything, and the video was just beginning. She's just crying. Yeah. And the uh, exciting, the most exciting of the part of the video. Yeah. Uh -huh. she cries so loud that I cannot hear anything. Oh my gosh! How old is she that she's crying so much during Harry Potter? Oh, uh, she's five years old. Oh my gosh, it's cute, but it's also sad, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Alice, what interests you in the sea city, the ancient city? Uh, what do you think is interesting, Alice? Uh, uh, cities underground. Under the ground? Let me see. Is there a city yeah. under the ground? Um, Alice, this is new, so can I research this for just a sec? I want to see if a city under the ground. Let's let's do this, you guys. So one second. Alice has given me an interesting problem. So I found this candy house here. Uh, wait, where is it? Okay, stop that share. And then I want to go to this one here. I'm going to write a city, a fantasy city under the ground, Alice, because this is a special request. And I forgot about that one. Uh, fantasy city 
under the ground. And Ellis, this is an interesting one because Elon Musk talks about cities under the ground. The guy, you know, that guy who owns SpaceX, who's a billionaire, he said that we'll have to go under the ground maybe if there's global warming, because under the ground it's cooler and you can do things there. So Ellis, let me find an underground city. Um, I'll just quickly go through these. Does this look interesting or? Maybe this, this looks kind of scary, Alice. I don't know. It depends I on- I think what... now we have a type of city that underground, like yeah. the, uh, like the, some more, they have the basement and in the basement, maybe there will be a food in there. Uh -huh. Just like uh, live underground. Hey, you guys, what do you see? Here's this nice family underground. But look at who the boy's best friend is. Is that human? What, what is that? Bone, do you it's see an that? an AI robot. Yeah, it's an AI robot. Do you think he's friendly or kind of scary? Scary, because <laughs> it sometimes bet betray him. It betrays him. Very good, Jimmy. Very interesting. Wow, that's a crazy city. I like it kind of, but it looks scary. Now, this looks totally mechanized. Does this look like fun or does it look like they're getting minerals from this place? Timmy, what do you think of this place? It looks like mineral extraction. This doesn't look like a good future. I saw that it's underground place. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about this place. It just looks like a lot of hard work and the air isn't very clean. I don't think there are any rocks down, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, there aren't even any yes. rocks left in that picture. So, wait, yes. where did that picture go? Let me find it again. That That's kind of like, uh, do you know the word, Timmy, dystopia? Yes, sir. Yeah, so dystopia, utopia is happy. Dystopia is pretty terrible future. Yes. Does this look like a dystopian city? Um, I don't see any workers, so yeah. this can be a big issue. You guys, I want to teach you this word. If the future doesn't look good, it's called dis. Dystopia or dystopian. If you check the chat, you guys, it's a really good word to learn for your writing. It's called dystopia or dystopian. It means when the future is not good, it's just really terrible and dark and terrible. So it's called dystopia. So that looks like kind of dystopia. All right. Now this, yeah, this looks really strange. I don't, this almost looks like it's, in uh, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, but it's a good choice too. All right, um, let me go back to the main homework thing. And I want to ask Bone, Bone, are you there? <laughs> Ellis put up another- Oh yes, I'm here. Ellis, that looks like a um, androgynous Hitler where you're not sure if it's a man or a woman. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Bone, uh, look at here, and I will share this with you. Bone, what's interesting for you? The ancient city, the underwater city, the Harry Potter. Um, have you seen this one, Bone? I uh, know, teacher. It's, I it, has seen a, it. it has a vortex in the sky. I can make this bigger. This one's kind of strange. Um, yeah. You go up into the vortex, but one student last night said it looks like it has terrible weather conditions. <laughs> so I don't know if you would want yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. Kitty, are you there? Kitty, yeah, what's, here. what city do you think is interesting for you to write one or two paragraphs about? Um, I think... I think the picture is um be <laughs> below. Yeah, this picture with marine. Yeah, everyone loves this ancient city. Or do you mean the candy picture? No, candy I picture mean... was yeah, candy was for the really young students last <laughs> night. They have like students who are eight and nine years old. They love a candy city. But our students in this class are mostly older, 10, 11, 12 years old. All right, so Kitty, why do you like the ancient city? Um, a lot of people like that. I like it. You like it. Because I think it's uh, have an um, answer to make me relax or 
can have I feel is uh is beautiful. Yeah. Um, yes. Do you think you could drink good, delicious hot tea there? Like they have a tea room? Oh, yes, that's good. <laughs> that would be cool. And hot baths, maybe even a library. So you can go there and study all winter and come back super intelligent, right? <laughs> <laughs> Liam, are you raising your hand? Liam's got his hand tall. Liam, what's going on? Talk to me. Uh, I have a question about the Asian city. Okay. Uh, is this a modern city? Um, no, I think it's based on like something you would find in the Himalayas. That's what Navy said. And that's also what I thought, like it's in Tibet or something. But it's a fantasy city because Tibet has that famous um, place, Lhasa, Tibet. That's where the, you know, Dalai Lama spiritual leader lived. And so let me, uh, let me go to the, um, the uh, Google and share this with you. So I think that city, Liam, is based on Lhasa. And it's a strange spelling, Lhasa is L-H-A-S-A, -S Lhasa. So in Vietnam, you have a lot of Buddhist people, um, Lhasa city, city. And so it's Lhasa in Tibet. So I think a lot of these fantasy cities are based on Lhasa in the Himalayas, right? And so the Dalai Lama lived here, but the Chinese kicked him out. So he moved to North India. So the Dalai Lama is like 85 years old. And so there is, that's, you know, that's a beautiful city. Now the Chinese government lets tourists go here, but there really isn't much religious activity anymore. Like you see the Buddhist people in Vietnam. This is Buddhist. Very, uh, it's called esoteric Buddhism. Here's the famous dog of, uh, it's called a Lhasa Apso. That dog comes from Tibet, the Lhasa Op, so he's very cute. It's a cute doggy. Hey, Daisy, are you there? Yes. So, Daisy, which of the cities are interesting to you? I'll go back to the picture. All right, Daisy, do you see anything interesting? Yes. Okay, which one? Mm, the accent city. The ocean one? No, the accent city. Um. Oh, the ancient city. Yeah. This one. Everyone likes that one. That's so interesting. I almost wonder, um, Daisy, because it looks so different than Vietnam. There's mountains with snow. Maybe that's why you guys like it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Is Tony, are you there, Tony? Yes, I'm here. Tony, what do you like? What's your interesting city? Um, under, under the sea, uh, the city under the sea. Yeah, I like that too also. Why do you like it? I think uh, when we are in that city, we will... Um, we will start a lot of yeah. exciting things. Could you go there with your school, like on a school trip, Tony? What? Could you go there with your class, you know? Like a school trip. I, I will go to that city if I can, but I think... So now remember, if you choose that for your writing, you have to say, oh, you have to take a submarine and go under the sea. You have to tell how to get there, okay? So that's the lesson for uh, the homework, how to get there. Go through yeah. the sea, find the submarine, this kind of thing. Doong, are you still there with the A3? Mr. Doong. Yeah, I'm here. Doong, what city are you interested in? Uh, probably the... The castle with mountains and stuff. Is it this one or is the it one, the one this? above the candy? candy oh, this one here. Candy. Yeah. Again, everyone likes that. I just chose that last night. It was one of my last pictures and it was so beautiful. That's why I chose it, Doom. Why do you like it? Uh, it's like 
kind of hidden inside the mountainous area. Yeah, we have a place where people do not know about, like in Harry Potter, most people do not know about Hogwarts, and yeah. this is quite similar because it is isolated in a place which looks very far away from other cities, other yeah. towns. Um, yeah. That's a really know, cool. It's just really interesting. And I like when you say it's like it. an old place from thousands, hundreds, thousands of years ago. Yeah. Good points, Doing. I like you say it's hidden in the mountains. Almost nobody knows about it. So it kind of has that secret feeling about it. But it's a good secret. It looks like a peaceful place, right? All right. How about Tina? Are you there, Tina? Tina? Oh, I'm here. Hey, Tina, what are you interested in? The ancient city, the uh, underwater city, the vortex city where you see the sky, the Harry Potter one, the city in the sky, the strange orbs or spheres? Uh, I don't really know. I'm, I, I think uh, the, like, the one that looks like the Hogwarts and the Harry Potter, the Harry Potter one. Yeah. Yeah, you like this one. Yeah. There it is. So someone was saying the towers are what are important there. Um, oh, Nguyen Gia Khan, are you still there? Yes. Gia Khan, what's interesting you? We have our Hogwarts, we have our city in the clouds, the strange orb city. Um we have more down here. We have this vortex city. Let's take a look. Is this one under the sea, you guys? That's pretty cool, actually. So, Gia Khan, what looks interesting to you? Uh, I think I like the city on the sky. OK, city in the sky. That's a good choice. That, not many people chose this one. Let's make it bigger and really get a look at that. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool, Gia Khan. You see that, yeah. Now, do you, we were talking about this, it uses solar energy, John said, so it's clean. And um, I said it uses maybe anti-gravity. What do you think? Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like this is one city, but these are smaller places or something. I don't know, you have to think about all this. Yeah. Let's go, let's go to Red Army. Red Army, are you there? Yeah, I'm right there. Red Army, what do you think? What city looks interesting to you? Yeah, come on. I think it's all interesting, though. It looks very good, beautiful. Yeah. I imagine in, in fantasy. Oh, yeah. mm, their castle in the winter looked like the Lords of the Rings. Uh huh. Lord of the Rings, this one here? No. Uh, this one down here. Yeah, it's. And look that in the winter, I think that. Yeah. Do you think Lord of the Rings has all the fighting and violence? Do you think this is a peaceful place, Red Army? Hmm, I don't know <laughs> because I read it very, um, yeah. very long, so I can't yeah. remember. Oh. Yeah. I was talking to the other student, um, our new student, uh, Kitty, and we were hoping there was tea rooms and hot baths and libraries, so it's a comfortable winter you can enjoy here, right? Hey, where's John? John, you had a question. John 11. Let's finish for tonight. But um, you guys ask your final questions then. Um, I think I like the castle in the mountains. This one here? Yeah. That's because nice. in, in here, I can make snowballs and throw each other. Oh, oh, oh. But John, Great it's supposed to be a... Joke. It's supposed to be a peaceful city with no fighting, and you're going to start the world's biggest snowball fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're going to throw ice balls at each other. And a quick I story. Quick story, because some students have to get ready to go to school tomorrow Monday. John, here's my quick story. I worked in a Japanese high school that was three stories tall. And in American high schools, you cannot throw snowballs because they don't want some kid to get hit in the face because it breaks your glasses. And then parents get angry and they shout at the principal. And so at the Japanese one, it snowed 
And John, they had this huge snowball fight. It was crazy. Uh, there are three stories, and they're it looked like popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. And the, these boys were really good baseball guys. They're throwing them and hitting them in the girls' heads, and the girls are screaming. And I said, "This is crazy. This could never happen." Yeah. <laughs> and why don't they? Why don't they have snowball machine guns? Oh, <laughs> that's a good idea, John. You could sell those in Japan and make some good money. Hey, Lewis, you had a question? Now, I have a fact to tell you about okay. the world city. Okay. You know, about, about a city, you know, that like, uh, who might just explore 5% of the city. So yeah. I think the underwater city, city uh -huh. is the, the, the best topic of this. Okay, do you want to choose that one, Lewis, for your writing? Yeah. And yeah, you're good yeah. for, you know, if you want to, you're always good for one page, Lewis. So by all means, write a page. You, yeah, you I, I try my best. Try okay, try your best. best. Thanks, Lewis. Right. All right, you guys, shall we finish for today, everybody? All right, I tried to get everyone a chance to speak. And um, let's see, Ariel. Ariel, would you like the last word for tonight? How are you, Ariel? Ariel. Ariel. What city is interesting to you? Oh, you like that Harry Potter city? Yeah. All right. So if you choose that. Now, remember, Ariel, we have to say, how do you get So remember, Harry Potter takes that magic train, you guys. So if you want to get to that Harry Potter city, remember to talk about You have to take the Hogwarts Express. Yes, exactly. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, can we say goodbye for tonight? Should we say goodbye to everyone? You guys? Oh my gosh, it's kind of noisy in there. So let's see. We have to say goodbye. Bye bye, Alice. Goodbye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, Tony. Bye, 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 bye Bone. Tina. Bye, bye, Kitty. Bye. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Timmy. Bye, bye, Jimmy. Take care, you guys. Bye, bye. 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 Brendan.